Hello everyone, my name is Christian from TradeVola, trading with know-how and transparency. After we discussed the last time dividends and how to generate a passive income, we want to start today with a new topic, what is bonds. Just make sure that you don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We would be very happy if you leave a like or a comment and we try to answer everything as fast as possible. But back to the topic um, of bonds. First of all, we want to discuss what is a bond, what different types of bonds are available, and how could be a bond one of the reasons of the failure of a US bank, and how you can also use it for your own portfolio, especially now in this volatile, volatile times. I think it's important to know how to use bonds, and also you can use them to secure your deposit, to secure your portfolio, especially if you have a um, big cash amount in your portfolio. I think it's interesting to use this instrument also to secure your positions and your portfolio itself. But now we want to have a look at the screen and see all the details and many more facts about bonds. Yeah, we want to start with a simple explanation of a bond. You can call it also a fixed rate loan where we have a lender and a borrower and uh, we can have this issued by corporates, by companies, as well as uh, by governments. And I think it's interesting to understand how this procedure works. So at the end, the lender, let's say, gives the borrower $100 and for this, he will pay him a fixed rate, what is also called coupon back, to make it easy, we say 5%, for example. And then at the end of the duration, he will pay back the same amount to the lender of $100. And every year or as long as um, the duration is, he will pay this 5% to the lender. So now let's have a look to the two important things, coupon and maturity. Coupon, like I said, is the rate what is agreed at the beginning when this uh, bond is issued and then normally you have a 5, 10, 2 years duration of uh, maturity. And now it's important to understand what happens if interest rate changes. And that's exactly what we had here as an example for Silicon Valley Bank. Let's give you some details how it happened that they made such a big loss with uh, bonds. Let's say we had here $100. We have 5 years of maturity and 5% coupon. Now interest rates were rising and at a later moment, let's say we will get instead of 5%, 10% also for bond. That's exactly what happened here. And then of course, everyone who wants to buy a new bond will always go for the one which is higher in the yield here in this or the coupon, uh, for example, of 10%. And then the value of the older one, what was issued with 5%, will of course decrease in the value because at the moment you can get a much better offer for 10%. And that's exactly what happened in the last months. Interest rates uh, by the central bank were rising. And now we want to show you how this affected the bonds, especially also the bonds uh, which were traded here for Silicon Valley Bank. So first of all, we have our 5% coupon and then we have our 10% coupon. At the moment when the interest rates are rising, it will happen the following our, let's put it that way, our $100 what we invested in our um, bonds will be sold at a secondary market. It is called to a lower price because of course it should be a lower price for example, $95, because in the same moment, you can also get much better bond for 10%. So here you will buy it for $95 because uh, the coupon is much lower than what we have at the moment at the market. Because at the end, when the maturity is over, when the bond ends, you will always get this $100 back. And to make sure that you are still be able to make approximately the same profit like what you do here with the 10%, the price of this bond goes down. So with every interest rate, let's say it will be later 15 or 20%, means the price 
with rising interest will always go down to have the gap between the latest bond, the latest coupon what you have and the coupon what was much lower because in the earlier days uh, we had a lower interest rate. And that's exactly what happened here with the bank portfolio for Silicon Valley Bank. Interest rates were rising, they had to sell their bonds, what they mainly bought for $100 to a much lower price. Of course, they can also normally wait till the end because of the end of the five years, what we discussed, you will always get your $100 back if nothing happened to the company or the government and they're still able to pay. But they had no time in this period because they need liquidity and this was the problem why they made such a big loss and at the end the bank failed. The same example will happen here for let's say we got 5% and in the future, in a few months later, bonds are having a coupon only of 10%. In this example, we also say $100 is an investment on uh, both sides. In this example, the price of the coupon will most probably be higher. Let's say uh, the price of the bond, $105 because now the coupon is much lower. So people are more interested in buying a bond with a higher coupon because now it's only available at 2%. So prices for bonds are rising, then the interest rates are falling. I think this example made it hopefully easier to understand what exactly happened and how prices of bonds uh, develop. And now it's important, I think, also to understand how can I trade bonds and which alternatives we have for bonds. For this, we want to have a look here at the interactive broker platform at the Trader Workstation. There's different examples here for US treasuries as bonds. You can just open them as a watch list, but as you see it already here in the chart, it doesn't look like a stock because the liquidity is not so high. But at the end, the rest is pretty much the same. You also have a, a bid and ask. You just have to define how much money you want to put in it. Normally, there's a minimum amount um, here. It's uh, listed with $1,000. But there are other bonds where you also have to invest maybe 10 or 25. But this will be always shown if you start trading them. The most difficult thing, I think, is to decide which bonds to choose. Mostly here, as you can see, there's US government bonds, what are the most secured bonds. Uh, they are almost known as risk-free comparing to other countries. They are really well secured, but in other countries or also states who issued bonds, you might get a better interest, but then with also risk of a failure of the state or of um, this country. So to make it easy and short, if you go here to watch list, you can choose under library US corporate bonds. Corporate bonds uh, are bonds what issued by uh, companies like uh, banks, but also like Apple or Amazon or other companies to get money to a fixed um, coupon. So these are the easiest way to access all this information just at the list and then you can choose between treasuries and corporate bonds and i think as you are a user already of the trader workstation it might be easy to understand how to trade them the main thing is really to understand which maturity to use and what is the best buy uh, what is the best time to buy them and now we want to discuss what is an alternative if you don't want to dive too deep in this topic about bonds. I think the best alternative is ETFs because there's a few interesting ETFs on bonds. For example, one of the most common one, Vanguard Total Bond Market Index, what has the symbol BND. At the moment, we have a yield here of 2.5%. The issue here is we have investments only in um, government bonds and especially if we have an overview about all the details we will see how many bonds are listed in this ETF. There's a yield of 4.8% and 
if you have a look back on the chart, it's very interesting because in the last year, the price uh, went down because here the ETF has the same issue. It has bonds from like one or two years ago. We can also check here the last uh, five years and it's a, more, a little bit more clear. So let's say in 2020, interest rates were quite low. So the coupon was not so high what we have now at the moment. And that's the reason why old this old bonds, what are included in TETF, will bring not such a high coupon like it's uh, available now. But step by step, the majority will end of this um, old bonds, what are included in this ETF. And now they will buy new bonds with a higher yield and with a better coupon. So in the future, this ETF should also go up again. So it's a good chance, a good moment to invest in such bond ETFs if you think the interest rates will not go higher than they are at the moment. And I think we are on a really good level. Of course, there can be still an interest increase by the Fed, but as we are already on a good level, I think the risk here comparing also to an investment to stock is quite low. If you think BND is maybe not enough yield or there's better options, if you want to invest in corporate bonds, for example, I have another very interesting ETF what invests in corporate bonds, what is called or what has the symbol LQD. It's from iShares and it invests like the name says in corporate ETFs. And here you can already see the yield is much higher. If we check here the last five years, it's pretty much the same, but the example for this ETF is higher yield because it invests in corporates. Corporate, of course, you have a not such a high security what you might have for government bonds. What was the example for BND? And we don't want to dive too deep in all the details with bonds. I think these ETFs, there are many more than uh, these two examples, is really a good investment. And there's something special about it that you can also secure your cash or your money with bonds. Because like I said, the US government bonds are almost seem to be risk-free. After we had now all these stories with bank crisis, investing in bonds can secure your cash, especially if you have a bigger account and maybe you have an account what is only secured to 25,000 and you're holding more than this in cash in your portfolio and you want to make sure it's still safe for any failure of your broker, of your bank, invested in bonds because the deposit insurance only covers your cash position, everything what is invested in something, it's at the end, you're owning it. And even if there's a failure of your broker or your bank, you're still the owner of um, these assets. It's different than cash positions. So to invest in bonds can also secure your cash and like I said you're always able to sell your bond at any time at a secondary market what might change in the price what we saw depending on the interest rate but it's still a very good way to secure your cash especially for brokers who only offer you 25 or 50 thousand and you have a much much bigger portfolio it can be one of good alternatives to an insurance of your cash because of insurances uh, for cash positions is also available if you are afraid that your bank, your broker might also get some problems in the future. So this I think is very interesting and it's good to know that bonds can secure your portfolio and can give you really a good um, outcome for the next few months or for the next few years and I think the best example to make it also a little bit more clear about pricing and price development here for bonds is a bond from Deutsche Bank what was issued at the beginning of 2020 for $100. Now exactly what we gave you earlier in our explanation. Now in 2022 we saw all these interest rates what were getting higher and higher, uh, interest rises. Here we had only 1.6% means now as you can get bonds with a much higher yield, this is only traded around $88 or euros, I think it's here in this example. But if you buy it now, you will still get 
the same interest every year till the maturity of 2027. At the end, you will still get, if nothing happens, your $100 uh, back. So at the moment, that's what I say. Even if you buy something with a lower coupon, it can be still a very good investment depending on the maturity. Because if you go back to our graphic at the beginning, you lend $100 and at the end you get $100 back. It's just what happens in between. And that's what we see here in the chart. And I think this chart explains it quite well, quite good to understand how the bonds and the prices of bonds are changing. I think it was good to show what bonds can do, what bonds are for and how to use them what are reasons uh, to put them also in, portfolio, in your portfolio and what is maybe an alternative uh, for a bond with the ETF of what, you, what we showed you here in the video. So just don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I would be very happy and I hope to see you soon.